Live and on demand from the WNY News Now studios in downtown Jamestown. This is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Here's what's happening. A record-breaking chill has hit the area. How low did we go? Plus, the owner of a closed Jamestown restaurant is speaking out. But first, forecaster Andrew Stevenson is live with a look at our weather. Hey, Dakota. Uh, hey, Andrew. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Andrew Dakota. I'm, I'm just I, so used to it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Let's take a look at some of the weather headlines. The lake effect snow showers we've been doing with will start to taper off today, but the cold temperatures will remain. It will be a bit warmer tomorrow, and we have a heat wave coming by next week. I'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Let's take a look at the snowfall reports from past 24 hours. Little Valley and Randolph topped it off with five inches, and Jameson and Falconer bottomed out with only a measly one inch. There's more snow coming, so if you like the snow, we have a whole winter to go. Take a look at the first defense Doppler radar. As you can see, those lake effect snow showers are beginning to taper off, and they will taper off as the afternoon progresses. And I'll have the full forecast details coming up in just a little bit. All righty, Andrew. Thank you very much. Our top story, a live look over downtown Jamestown, where record-breaking cold temperatures are blanketing the area. Forecasters say last night, Jamestown broke its previous low temperature, a record of 17 degrees set back in 1961 after temps dipped down to 16 at the Jamestown Airport at around 11 p.m. Now, early this morning, temperatures went even lower, dipping into the low teens. Forecasters expect the temps to get a bit warmer throughout the day. Wednesday's high is forecasted at 26 degrees. Now, later in the week, temperatures will warm up even more, with highs on Thursday and Friday predicted to be in the mid to upper 30s. Well, the owner of a family-style restaurant in Brooklyn Square that abruptly closed following nearly three months of operations is speaking out. Vince DeJoy, the former City of Jamestown Director of Development and owner of Jimmy's Family Restaurant, says the closure occurred due to several unforeseen issues. The eatery opened in August after months, uh, after, months after the local Friendly's chain closed their doors there. I wasn't really there running it day to day. I had someone doing it, and uh, there was a change in that management. And quite frankly, it was just a number of issues, and I'm extremely sad. I personally, you know, uh, have lost a great deal of money in that venture. I wish it would have survived. Now, around 50 people, some of whom were Friendly's employees, were hired part of that opening. This was not DeJoy's first restaurant venture. He and his brother previously owned and operated Stage Left in the 1990s, which is currently Forte. And New York has raised the minimum age to buy tobacco and electronic cigarettes to 21 years old from 18. That law went into effect this morning. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the goal is to prevent addictive cigarette and vaping products from getting to young people. The New York Department of Health says nearly 40 percent of 12th grade students and 27 percent of high school students are using e-cigarettes. They say the increase is largely driven by flavored e-liquids. The Surgeon General says 88 percent of adult smokers started using tobacco as minors and 90 percent of those who purchase cigarettes for minors are between the age of 18 and 20 years old. Now, Cuomo's administration has pushed to outlaw flavor e-cigarettes altogether, but a court has blocked that ban for now. Chautauqua County already raised the age to buy those products to 21. Well, the Jamestown Jammers management says they're continuing to seek the public's help in renaming the team. Last month, the team's general manager, Frank Fanning, asked the community to submit name ideas to the team's website. So far, Fanning says the staff has five favorites. The Jamestown Fighting Beavers, Jamestown Woodchucks, Jamestown Funny Bones, Jamestown Jumping Bucks, and the Jamestown Tundra Swans. He says the team is looking for something that gets area youth excited about the sport. I hear from all kinds of people that it's got to be some kind of an animal. It's got to be, you know, something that is around Jamestown, maybe something around the ballpark. It's got to be, you know, a cute creature. Now, the GM hopes to narrow down the names within the next few months. 
Fanning says he could not give a specific timeline, but explained it will be sooner rather than later. The team will play in the Perfect Game Collegiate Baseball League in June 2020. Well, hopefully you all are having a uh, great day out there. Thanks so much for joining us here on WNY News Now. Um, Got to say hello to David. Good afternoon to you. He says, baby, it's cold outside. And boy, I totally agree with you there, David. Um, Got to say hello to Pam. Hopefully you're having a good day. Shannon, great to have you on the broadcast here with us. Um, Don, hello to you. Um, Emily, hello to you. Hopefully you're having a good day. Um, Don asks, where's Dakota? Well, he's on his way to Buffalo for a much-needed day off. Um, certainly, we do miss him, but Andrew does a great job. Um, so we are all in great hands. I've got to say hello to uh, Kyle and Lewis as well. Hopefully, you are all having a great day. Um, and uh, good afternoon to Lori, too. Um, as for these Jamestown Jammers... Well, they won't be the Jamestown Jammers for much longer. Um, it's really great to see baseball back at uh, Russell E. Dietrich Park. And let me tell you, this this video that we've been rolling, there it is. I really wish it was like that out right now, let me tell you. But um, nevertheless, um, certainly it's interesting to see. And it's really cool that the team has been transparent to let the community get involved in the name process. And certainly talking with Mr. Fanning yesterday, our reporters um, say that you know he really, 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 really wants the team to be connected to the community. And he really wants to try to bring young people back into this game and into Russell E. Dietrich Park. So uh, it will be really interesting to see what they come up with name-wise. I think some of them are very silly, but to the point where you can get young kids involved. And, and that seems to be the whole goal there. So uh, really cool. Hopefully you all are having a good day. Um, and uh, thanks so much for being here with us. Coming up, a lot more news to tell you about. Straight ahead, the award Congressman Tom Reed recently won. But first, why state officials are reminding hunters and what they're reminding hunters to do this deer season. Andrew. A live look outside. We got a few snow flurries out there. It's 22 degrees, and with that with the winds at southwest nine, we got a wind chill of 12. So it's kind of cold out there. More news and weather coming up in just a few moments. Live and on demand, you're watching WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24 7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Well, happening now, New York State's Department of Environmental Conservation are reminding hunters to put safety at the forefront this fall when going afield. DEC Commissioner Basil Sego says even though hunting is safer than ever, hunting-related accidents and falls from tree stands still occur. He says never climb in or out of a tree stand with a loaded firearm and read the manufacturer's instructions and warnings before using a tree stand and check stands every season. Hunters should also treat every firearm as if it's loaded, keep that muzzle pointed in a safe direction, and keep their fingers off the trigger and outside of the trigger guard until they're ready to shoot, and be sure of their target and what's beyond it. The state DEC also encourages all hunters to wear blaze orange or pink. Wearing those colors make hunters highly visible in the field and prevents others from mistaking them for an animal or shooting in their direction. 
The agency also reminds hunters that legal hours for big game hunting across the state are from official sunrise to sunset, and it's the hunter's responsibility to know when those times are in his or her location. Well, Congressman Tom Reed was recently awarded for his years of public service and bipartisan spirit during an event at, in Washington, D.C. Reed accepted the Jefferson Lincoln Award from the Leon Panetta Institute. Now, that award recognizes individuals whose professional achievements represent exceptional commitment to the principles of democracy, to bipartisanship, and to the dedication and encouraging of the healthy function of the United States system of government through an informed electorate. Panetta is an American politician who has served in several different public offices, including the Secretary of Defense, Director of the CIA, White House Chief of Staff, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, and a U.S. Representative from California. Well, it's that time of year already, and if you haven't started budgeting for the holidays, experts say you should start right now. In today's Consumer Watch, Mary Maloney has three tips to avoid debt this festive season. Spending sprees and holiday sales make it easy to go over budget this season, but financial experts say there are easy ways to rein in your spending. Knowing right now how much you're going to spend, for the next two months and really setting limits for yourself. That's tip number one. Make a budget and stick to it. Experts say once you assign a distinct dollar amount, get more specific and list who will be on your gift list and be realistic about how much you'll spend for each person. If you do that, not only do you end the year feeling better about your finances, but it also sparks creativity, so the gifts you end up giving tend to be better. Tip number two, start early and shop with a plan. This gives you time to find quality used items or make your own gifts. That's enough time to really make a plan and say, this is what we have, and now let's go start looking at creative gifts now, not three days before Christmas. And number three, get the family involved. What if you brought your family into it and said, look, this is the amount of money we have. We can certainly spend it on the next best gift for you, but we also would love to give as a family. What do you think about that? And remember, spending less doesn't make those gifts any less meaningful. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. All righty, Mary, thank you very much. And again, it's not always about the price, but the thought that counts. Well, speaking of thoughts, today is World Kindness Day. An organization called the World Kindness Movement started the day back in 1998. 28 countries now mark November 13th with Acts of Kindness. A campaign to wear cardigans for this year's holiday has spread on social media. A Pittsburgh broadcasting station wants people to channel the spirit of Mr. Rogers. The social media users are urging people to use the hashtag World Kindness Day to show off their good deeds. And Kindness UK also listed a few things in which you can do to spread kindness. They include doing a good deed, giving someone a compliment, holding, holding the door for someone, and volunteering. Certainly um, really great. Happy World Kindness Day to you and we appreciate your kindness by tuning in on this broadcast and connecting with us in the comments, um, listening to uh, your local news. Certainly I think every day probably could be World Kindness Day, right? If you can hold the door for someone, it's just the smallest courtesy and I'm sure it makes their day a lot better. And uh, like I always tell everyone here in the newsroom, you know, Absolutely, everyone is doing a great job, so um, we, we appreciate that, nevertheless. I've um, got to say hello to John, hello to uh, Chuck, hopefully you're doing well. Uh, hello to Mackenzie. Uh, Lori uh, says she was never really good at geography. Um, I'm not sure what we're talking about. Maybe we're talking about weather, but hello to Scott, hello to you. Hopefully you're doing well. Um, and uh, people asking where Dakota is, he has a much, much needed day off, so that's his gift for World Kindness Day, nevertheless. And uh, Chuck's curious as to where Matt is. Matt's no longer on the broadcast, um, so uh, certainly we wish him well and hope he is uh, having a good day out there on World Kindness Day. Coming up next, Chief Forecaster uh, Andrew, I'm sorry, Forecaster Andrew Stevenson. See, I can't get it right. I'm sorry, Andrew. I'm just so, it's like it's burned into my brain. But we love you nevertheless. Andrew is here with a look at our weather, and he's going to do an excellent job to tell us about when the warmth will be back. That's very important. And later, giving back by helping out how one group is trying to make camp just a little bit better.
Pronto Mart, not your average corner store. Located on the corner of Forest and Newland Avenues in Jamestown, Pronto Mart has everything you've been looking for. An amazing selection of hot foods, a large variety of premier headgear, and smoky accessories to fit any style. Pronto Mart, not your average corner store. Stop in and visit us today. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Extra, extra, read all about it. Not tomorrow, but right now on the WNY News Now mobile app. Follow local news as it happens. Top story of Forestville man's weather video has gone viral. And stay informed with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Our Matt Hummel is standing by live outside of Chautauqua County Court with more on this case. Matt, good afternoon to you. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. First Defense Weather, the Southern Tier's only live and local weather source. Now, here's Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. Maybe we should have had Dakota do some weather from his day off. Maybe that would have helped, Justin. Taking a look at the storm, in, in storm interceptor from this morning. This was driving through um, rain off this morning, and it was still snowing out there, and the roads were a little icy by the looks of it. But the snow is beginning to taper off as the rest of the afternoon progresses. Taking a look at the snowfall totals again from the past 24 hours. That video was from Randolph where they topped off at five inches and Jamestown we here got only an inch over and only and had about just about two and a half inches. If you're looking for snow, we got more snow coming. There's a whole winter still to come. Winter had to arrive early. Taking a look at some photos sent in to us. This one comes from Pam Geary. I apologize for my, if I'm a pr pronouncing that wrong. Taking a look at the snowfall out there in Randolph. That's where they got the most snow, about five inches of snow out there. And here's another photo of the snow piling up on that back deck over there. Ugh, too early for this stuff, if you ask me. Taking a look now, as I can get this to work, taking a look at what we got for the next 24 hours. As you can see, those lake effect snow showers will begin to taper off as the rest of the afternoon progresses. As we head into tomorrow, we're going to be dealing with a few snow showers, rain showers. I think this is overdoing it a little. I don't think it's going to be that extreme, but we're going to be dealing with those snow and rain showers tomorrow. So today's forecast around the region, 20 to 26 degrees. It's still cold out there. We're about 20 degrees below average. It's too early for this, too early for this. The lake effect snow tapering off still cold and with that winds 5 to 10 low breezy it's going to feel even cooler than that it's 12 the wind chill is 12 at noon so feels too cold out there taking a look tonight's forecast it's going to be cloudy tonight the snow tapers off mostly cloudy it's cold it's breezy so if you're outside tonight make sure you got a jacket and make sure you have the heat cranked up. Taking a look at what you got in the next seven days. It's cold today, a little bit warmer tomorrow, a few snow showers, a few rain showers. And as we head into next week, we got a heat wave coming, if you want to call it that. It's going to warm up into the lower 40s, but hey, it's going to be nice as high pressure moves in. Stay tuned, sports is next with Norm, so don't go away. When you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading the WNY News Now mobile app. Stay up to date on local news, weather, and sports that matter to you. Plus, subscribe to breaking news and weather alerts from the team that puts coverage first. In addition, watch news as it happens with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at PhoneZoneShop.com. Happy Hump Day, sports fans, and Andrew, thanks for getting my name right on this one. 
Welcome back to WNY News Now. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. To, or tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, the Buffalo Sabres will be back in action as they will host the Carolina Hurricanes. Buffalo is currently on a five-game losing streak and are in fifth in the Atlantic Division with 20 points, two points behind the Toronto Maple Leafs. Meanwhile, Carolina is in fifth in the Metropolitan Division with 21 points, a single point behind the P Pittsburgh Penguins. The game will be televised on MSGB. On Tuesday, the MLB named the AL and NL Managers of the Year for the 2019 season. Rocco Baldelli, in his first year as manager for the Minnesota Twins, received the AL honor, becoming the youngest manager to ever win the award at 38 years old. With Baldelli's tutelage, the Twins posted a 23-win improvement from 2018 to 2019, winning 101 games, though they were swept by the Yankees in the ALDS. In the National League, in his first full season as a manager, Mike Schilt of the St. Louis Cardinals won the NL Manager of the Year award. Schilt led St. Louis to 91 wins and an appearance in the National League Championship Series, in which they were swept by the eventual World Series champion, Washington Nationals. For any NFL fans effective on Tuesday, ballots can be casted to choose players for the 2020 Pro Bowl. Voting for Pro Bowl players is free, and fans can vote as many times as they wish. The Pro Bowl will be played at Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida for the fourth straight year. Voting will cease on December 12th. More information can be found on the NFL website. That's it for sports today. Back to Justin and Andrew. Alrighty, Norm. Thank you very much. Well, volunteers recently worked to improve the facilities at Camp Timbercrest, a Girl Scout camp near Randolph. The Girl Scouts of Western New York say around 25 volunteers from the Friends of Timbercrest group made enhancements to the camp's lake trail, painted new boat shed, and, and assembled the first shipment of new picnic tables that will be installed next year. Now, this was the fifth annual work weekend in the group's history. Camp Timbercrest is located on Moore Road just outside of Randolph. And for more information on the Girl Scouts of Western New York and how you can volunteer, you can visit them at gswny.org. Um, so a uh, pretty great uh, uh, event there they had, Andrew, and certainly on World Kindness Day, uh, be the best time to, uh, I think, do uh, a lot of volunteering mm -hmm. and things like that. It wasn't warmer out there. Yeah, I know, right? It looks like this the, the event happened a couple weeks ago, so at least it wasn't super, super cold for them. Um, probably one of the last times they could get out and really enjoy um, the facilities, nevertheless. Um, so hello to Donna. Hopefully you're having a good day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Good to see you on the broadcast. Uh, Lori, she says, way too early. It seems like they all agree with you, uh, Andrew. Way too early for this snow, and, uh, and I'm in the same boat there, too. Um, hello to uh, Chuck. He says, thanks so much for the update and you're a good anchor. I appreciate it, Chuck. Um, I owe Andrew an apology. I, I didn't mean to call you Dakota earlier. And uh, our producer's reminding me I did it twice, even though the teleprompter clearly says, Andrew, but it's almost like when you say something every single day <laughs> for the last three years of your life, you're used to uh, saying that. So I will get used to it. Um, hopefully, as we have you more and more on the air, which is uh, really good. And uh, speaking of the air, a time for a final check of our uh, weather forecast. And certainly, Andrew, um, it is uh, going to be a cold one out there for at least the rest of the day today, right? Mm. Cold. It's too, and like I said, it's too early for this. We're about 20 degrees below average. As you can see, the average is 50 degrees, and today we're not even going to make it to 30. So it's even more than 20 degrees, mm. about 25 degrees below average. It does get a bit warmer tomorrow, 37, 36 degrees, and it's going to cool off again by Saturday. And we have that heat wave, if you want to call it that, coming next week as temperatures will get into the low to mid 40s. But looking beyond that, it looks like it's going to get colder again. So uh, well, I hey. guess, guess winter just wanted to arrive early. Yeah, hey, winter is here. Uh, what are you going to do about it? But uh, thank you, Andrew, nevertheless. Uh, we are back tomorrow with more of the great news you love. Uh, be sure to follow us in the meantime on our mobile app. Just search WNY News Now on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download it right now. It is free. We leave you with a live look over Burtis Bay on Chautauqua Lake. 
Not a great day to be out on the lake. Hopefully your boat's off there by now. Um, that'll probably be freezing over uh, in a couple of uh, months here as uh, we move into the winter. Still a little bit snowy out there. If you missed anything we talked about today, don't worry. You can watch this broadcast on the flip side here on Facebook Live and on our 24-7 streaming network at WNYNewsNow.com. Great to see you. We'll see you back tomorrow.